God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, Evangelist Anita Rivera. And, uh, you know, uh, today is September 25th, 2020 already. Uh, what, just a few days away before we get into the month of October. Time is a flying, and uh, it is a major sign of the times. The Word of God tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, that unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, he has shortened those days. And so that, among other signs that are listed in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, proclaim and declare that the day of the Lord truly is at hand. All right. I want to get right into tonight's broadcast. we got a couple of headlines to share with you tonight. First off is uh, concerning signs in the sky, according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25. Look at this report. It says the following, Earth is set to get a new mini-moon. A new mini-moon, but astronomers are confused by its origin. All right, all right. It says here, Earth is set to get a new moon, but exactly what the newly discovered object is, is a mystery. According to scientists, according to scientists they say that an object known as 2020 SO is heading towards Earth, and from October, starting in October 2020, it will be a mini-moon, in addition to our current moon in the sky. And they're saying that this new mini-moon could stay in orbit of our planet until May 2021, next year. Well, we have the moon. Earth regularly gets many small asteroids and meteors which caught in its orbit which astronomers call mini-moons. The definition of a moon is any natural object which is caught in a planet's gravitational pool. Now astronomers have detected a small, non-threatening object which is heading towards Earth and could get caught in the gravity of the planet for up to eight months, according to simulations from astronomers. A video of the simulation shows the object 2020 SO making two close approaches to Earth while in orbit of our planet. So, uh, now friends, I find this very fascinating uh, because, again, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, go there with me very quickly. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, says the following, And there will be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, a distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So here is a powerful portion of a sign that Jesus said would take place before his second return. And uh, his second return is near, and we must be ready. We, you know, we must be ready. We, we see very, very strange anomalies happening in the, you know, in the sky. You know, as a matter of fact, okay, uh, you know, here we are, uh, you know, again, September 25th, 2020, just last night, the moon was, again, uh, you know, it was darker shade. It was not the shade of white. It started off white, and it started getting more reddish. This has been happening for the past month, month and a half, probably even a bit longer, but I just, you know, I, you know, maybe just noticed it up until that time. Um, and all these things, again, is, uh, you know, is a, is a, is, is, is signs that we cannot, we, we just cannot ignore. We cannot ignore. I want to take you to another portion of scripture very quickly. Go with me to Job chapter 25. I, I want to read it to you before I get into the next report here. Job chapter 25. Job chapter 25, starting in verse 1. Hear this word, okay? It says the following, Then Bildad the Shuhite answered and said, Dominion and fear belong to him. Belong to who? They belong to God. Dominion and fear belong to God. He makes peace in his high places. Is there any number to his armies? Absolutely not. To answer that question, absolutely not. It goes on to say, upon whom does his light not rise? 
How then can man be righteous before God? Or how can he be pure who is born of a woman if even the moon does not shine? Now here we're talking about very quickly how earth is set to get a new mini moon. But astronomers are confused by its origin. They're saying we don't know where it came from. It just kind of came out of nowhere. We're not even sure what it is. But it'll be here till May next year. And the Lord says, again, in the book of Job, chapter 25, verse 5, If even the moon does not shine, and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less man who is a maggot and, and a son of man who is a worm. I think the Lord is declaring, again, that we need to get ready. We need to get our houses in order. The day of the Lord is at hand, and there, 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 there is much happening in these times, much darkness that is taking place, much violence on the earth. The Bible tells us in Hosea chapter 4, verse 1, that by swearing, stealing, and killing, and breaking all restraint, there is bloodshed upon bloodshed, therefore the land will mourn, and everyone there will waste away. There is major labor pains that are happening on the planet. And all of these are proofs, again, that we're living in the last days. All of these are confirmations that the day of the Lord is at hand. God draws the mighty away with his power, he says. Job chapter 24, verse 22. But God draws the mighty away with his power. He rises up and no man is sure of life. He gives them security and they rely on it, yet his eyes are on their ways. They are exalted for a little while. Then they are gone. They are brought low. They are taken out of the way like all others. They dry out like the heads of grain. Now if it is not so, who will prove me a liar and make my speech worth nothing? Powerful statement, my friends. Powerful statement. Something that I hope that we can say. As we, each and every one of us, will have to give an account for every idle word that we speak. Amen? Alright, let me uh, bring to you another report here. Uh, this report... Uh, coming in from live science and, uh, you know, again, proving that we're living in the last days. These are the birth pains that are taking place upon the planet. Check this out. It says here, zombie storms. Zombie storms are rising from the dead thanks to climate change. Now, this is what they're thinking. You know, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're saying this is because of the, the change in the climate, the change in... In, 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 in our planet because of the, you know, the global warming. But I believe the Bible has something to say about that. Uh, you know, we've talked about global cooling here at Open Your Eyes, people, and we've brought to you reports and, and you know, Bible scripture concerning that, how the earth uh, is preparing itself for a cooling because of the, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, the ring of fire volcanic activity that is increasing and that is part of biblical prophecy the book of acts chapter 2 starting in verse 1 talks about uh how there will be uh signs in the sun in the moon and in the star or actually that's in the gospel of Luke. Uh, please forgive me it says that there will be uh, signs in the um in 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 the um um in the sky and on the earth below blood fire and vapors of smoke the sun shall be darkened and the moon turn into blood before the coming of the day and terrible day of the lord and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, um, we've talked about global cooling, but I believe that the Bible has also something to say about global warming. Not what many people would want to hear, but I'm going to bring it out anyway. Climate change, global warming is, a, again, another sign of the times. It's a major sign of the soon coming day of the Lord. Second Peter, let me read it to you very quickly. Second Peter chapter three, starting in verse ten. Actually, I like to read it uh, just in, you know a bit more in context, if you will. Second Peter chapter three, starting in verse three, knowing this first that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, "Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation." For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water, but the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire 
until the day of judgment for fire and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And then it says the following, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, that as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. But then it says the following, talking about global warming, talking about climate change, the earth is in labor pains. There are birth pains happening on this planet, again, because it knows that the day of God is at hand. And it says here, in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Talking about global warming, right? Global cooling. All right, listen, again, zombie storms, this is what they're calling it. Zombie storms are rising from the dead thanks to climate change. Uh, wildfires are burning the West Coast. Hurricanes are flooding the southeast. Some of those storms are rising from the dead. Zombie storms which regain strength after initially petering out are the newest addition to the year 2020. And these undead weather anomalies are becoming more common thanks to climate change. Uh, because 2020 we now have zombie tropical storms. Welcome back to the land of the living, they said. Tropical storm hashtag Paulette, the National Weather Service uh, said on Twitter just this past Tuesday. Uh, they said that Paulette has opened her frightening eye once again. She wasn't gone. Just when they thought this monstrous storm was done and it died out, it got it was brought back to life. Again, this is why they're calling it zombie storms rising from the dead. That said, Paulette regained strength and became a tropical storm once more about 300 miles away from the Azores Islands on Monday. Uh, the term zombie storm is new. And though the phenomenon has been recorded before, it is thought to be very rare. Uh, but zombie storms are going to happen more often, said Donald Weebles, a professor of atmospheric sciences at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And as with other natural disasters that have been intensifying in recent years, such as wildfires and hurricanes, climate change and rapid global warming are to blame. They, 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 now, again, this is what they say. There has been an extreme amount of heating of the Gulf of Mexico, particularly in some of the ocean areas off of the Caribbean. The Gulf of Mexico, where many hurricanes gain strength before hitting the U.S., is particularly vulnerable uh, to global warming because the Gulf waters are very shallow and thus heat up easily. Uh, they said that, that the Atlantic Ocean storms typically form in warmer parts of the ocean near Africa due to a combination of atmospheric and ocean conditions. Uh, they then race across the ocean towards the Americas. Uh, hurricanes need warm water and moist air to form, they said. Uh, and according to the University of Cooperation for Atmospheric Research, storms grow, and if there's a continuous supply of energy from warm water and air, they, they, you know, that's how they grow. And, and then eventually they start to weaken out when they move over cooler waters or over the land. They say if they're not so strong in the past, they would just die out. Uh, but now, what's happening is that they are reaching warm water in the Caribbean, for instance, in the Caribbean region, and they're picking up energy again. Okay, and, and, and so, the, you know, they're saying this is also true for storms that have not died out yet. And so they're concerned. And, and so what I'm looking at here, folks, it's, it's like becoming a trend in the times that we're living in. It's like, um, you, know, you, know what I'm, you know, what I'm noticing is, mute, what was it called, mutations? These are mutations that are happening. I was just reading a report here, kind of aside from, uh, you know, the weather phenomenons and, 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 the, and the, you know, the sky anomalies with the mini moons that are going to be, or the mini moon that will be joining our, our current moon. Uh, COVID-19 mutation may be evolving to bypass mask wearing and hand washing. So they're, they're also saying that um, a new COVID-19 mutation is appearing to be even more contagious. According to a study, an expert say it could be a response by the virus to defeat masks and other social distancing efforts. I believe it's the virus's response of, because it is being stifled and it actually needs to breathe. You know, sometimes, uh, actually a lot of times, uh, you know, things die uh, in oxygen. Things die... Uh, you know, when the sun hits it, you know, things die when the natural habitat gets a hold of it, if you will. So when you when you want it, you know, when you start to incubate this thing, uh, you know, I say particularly concerning COVID-19, 
you know, you're, you know, it's, it's no different than, than, you know, harvesting, uh, you know, mold, uh, you know, mildew. It's, 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 it's going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's going to mutate. It's, it's going out of its way to now, uh, you know, survive. And, and that becomes a thriving environment, you know, a, a closed, darkened uh, space. And so when they're talking about COVID-19 mutations are appearing to be more contagious uh, because of the masks and the gloves, this is their way of, of trying to, uh, you know, you know, fight back, or this is their way of trying to basically breathe, if you will. It's really bizarre. It's like they want to die. COVID-19 wants to die, and it's saying, you got to let me out, you know? And But what's happening is that we're told by the CDC, we're told by the World Health Organization, wear your mask. This is going to stop the spread of COVID-19. And what you're doing is that you're creating a monster. You're, you're, you're causing something that should be allowed to uh, you kind of, in a way, come out just so it could die off. You're you're causing it to be harbored and 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 and, and you know thus mutate and it's going to become a, a big issue. Okay, I, then, I mean you know let's talk about mutation for a second. What does the Bible have to say? Does it say anything about uh, you know you know mutation? Well, let me give you some some specific scriptures here. First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen verse thirty eight through thirty nine says, "But God gives it a body as." He has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for for fish. So you don't want to get in, 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 in a mutation situation. You don't want to have any bacteria start to mutate or form. And we have to be, we really have to be smarter than what we've been lately here, folks. I, I, mean, I mean, you know, I say not just here in the U.S., but around the world. I'm talking about organizations that, that claim to be helping, but they seem to be doing more damage, more harm than good. And, and, and that's a major concern because with something as simple as a coronavirus, which is known in medical textbooks as a common cold, uh, being stifled from doing its thing and being in a way part of, you know, you know, making uh, our bodies uh, more, um, I'd say healthier, I'd say more healthier, but it, it causes our immune system to, to work and function. It's kind of like, um, you know, here's a, you know, you know, it, it's kind of like its way of saying, here's a health check. You know, we don't even like the common cold. We don't want to have anything like that. But uh, if it if it comes, it's almost like for a reason. Again, it's to it's 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 to give our immune system a type of health check, uh, and you know, keep it running well. Uh, it's it's smart. Our our bodies are smart. It's the most sophisticated uh, you know thing in the entire planet that's ever been created by our Creator God. Um, and please know that God is real and, and he is the one who creates all things. And so Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 also says, you shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle breed with a different kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor shall you wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13 says, consider the work of God. Consider the work of God. Who can make straight what he has made crooked? Okay, so we, we really need to stop. Again, I, I, I know there's a lot of um, hands involved, a lot of you know medical people in, in the medical field and scientists, what scientists and all these people that claim to be part of, of the solution, and, and they, I believe that they're causing more of a problem. I, I, and, and, and again, that's a major concern because um, while God is, is looking to make straight, they're going out of their way to cause it to be crooked, and, and they're, they're going to cause more patients, they're going to cause more sickness and disease because they're not following simple protocol. A lot of these people, a lot of these organizations have a hidden agenda, and they, they're very serious about making it come to fruition. And what I, what I know for a fact is that there's a lot of these people behind these organizations that are going out of their way to use a public as guinea pigs. They're going out of the way to do this massive social engineering experiment, this massive um, you know, medical experiment on the public. Why pay for people to come in and, and, and you know, take a vaccine just to kind of be a test tube bunny when we could just use the, the public? You know, we could do those, um, what are those airplanes that, you know, fly over sometimes, uh, what's it, the chemtrails? And it's been happening for a long time and it needs to stop. It really does. I mean, listen, we know that we're living in the last days. You know, stopping those things is not going to cause a, um, uh, you know, it's not going to stop the day of the Lord from coming. It's not going to stop the second return of Jesus Christ. But at least it'll show, you know, at least we can enjoy what we have left before the day comes. You know, we can, you know, we, you know, if we made a mess, we could try to be good stewards in the small bit of time that we have uh, before his day comes because the day of the Lord is going to be a terrible day. And I, let me, let me share with you some specific scriptures because I, I happen to mention that as a matter of fact, our ministry is dedicated to proclaiming the day of the Lord 
And I really want us to get a bit more of understanding as to what that day means, what, what that term means. It is a biblical term, and it actually comes straight from the Bible. And uh, it's, 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 it's a riveting, um, it's, it's, it's just riveting. It's, uh, anyway, let me, let me share with you, if, if you uh, will, give me one moment here. I've got to uh, bring up a specific scripture here. I did not plan to get into this portion of scripture, so just give me a moment here as I um, do a, uh, as I look it up real quick. I believe I want us to go. No, not there. Hold on. Give me one second. I knew this may happen. Um. I want to take you to a couple portions of scripture, but I want to, there's one specific, and I'm trying to find it real quick. Ah, I think it's Isaiah chapter 13, I think, I hope. <laughs> there's several areas in the Bible that mention the day of the Lord specifically. And, uh, but, but there's some that is, it really, it, anyway, let me share with you this particular portion here. Uh, Isaiah chapter 13 Uh, uh, verse 1 says the following, The burden against Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw. And if you were to go down to verse 6, it says the following, Wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt. And they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take a hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellation will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. And then he says here, I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will halt the arrogance of the proud, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a mortal more rare than fine gold, a man more than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens. Hear this, folks. Oh, this is talking about the day of the Lord. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth will move out of her place. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger, it shall be as a hunted gazelle and as a sheep that no man takes up. Every man will turn to his own people and everyone will flee to his own land. And, there, and, and, and more, folks. There's more. And I actually want to read to you another Another area of this, okay, Amos, I think it's Amos, I hope it is, Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Amos chapter 5, verse 18. All right, here it is, here it is. Uh, Amos chapter 5, verse 16, I'll start with. And it says, therefore, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this, there shall be wailing in all streets. They shall say on all the highways, alas, alas. They shall call the farmer to mourning and skill for lamenters to wailing. <clears throat> Excuse me. In all vineyards there shall be wailing. For I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? That is a definition as to the day of the Lord. So we got to be ready. Come on. We must be saved. We must be born again. We must have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord is at hand and it's not going to be delayed. You can't stop this day from coming. You know, the earth experiencing what it's experiencing, the perilous times that we're living in, men 
lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud boasters, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, more. The signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, the distress of nations. Evil men and impostors growing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. God is making it very clear that we're living in the times of the end, that this is the last generation. He's making it very clear, and we must give heed. We must pay attention. We must give our lives to Jesus. We must fully submit and surrender our entire lives to Jesus Christ. Now you may say, well, evangelist, you know, I, I hear you and I'm, I, I see all that you're saying, but you know, I'm, I'm of a different religion. I'm, a, I'm of a different, uh, you know, belief system. And I don't know if I'm, you know, if I, if, if I can just do what you're saying with you know, surrendering my life to Jesus. I serve another God. I serve another idol. I serve, uh, you know, another, you know, uh, you know, religion or belief system. Listen, that will not save you. It won't save you. Again, the Bible says, I just read it to you, Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Actually, verse 19, it says, It will be, the day of the Lord will be as though a man fled from a lion. It, it will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. It's like your own religion will set you up on that day. Your own belief system outside of Jesus, outside of Jesus Christ, your own belief system will set you up to suffer on this day. When it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. It's not God's will that you go through what is being stated. It's God's will that you be under the shadow of the Almighty. It's God's will that you be in right standing with God, that you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that all these things, all the blessings of God, all the promises of God, which are yes and amen to the glory of God the Father, will be added unto you. It is God's will that you be saved. It is God's will that you... That, that, that he be your refuge, that he be your fortress, your strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. It is God's will that you be filled with the Holy Spirit, that your name be written in the Lamb's book of life, that you are a man or a woman or a child of God that is being led by the Holy Spirit in all things in your life. It is God's will that your mind be renewed with the word of God, with the scriptures. You, you can't really understand the Bible. I remember before I, I, I was saved, before I gave my life to Jesus and I submitted my life to Jesus, before I was filled with God's Holy Spirit, I saw, I, I took a moment one day as an unbeliever. I was in a heap of mess. I was, I was just, I was in desperate straits. I was a sinner. I was a sinner and it was just a bad, it was a bad life. And I remember one day I made my way to the scriptures, to the Bible. I didn't call it the scriptures at the time. I just happened to have a Bible. Um, and I really, I, I, I don't even remember where it came from. I, 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 I couldn't even tell you right now. But I remember going to a portion of scripture and I started to read in Genesis chapter one and I only made it. I think I, I barely remember, I only made it a, a few verses. I don't even made it, I don't think I made it to even chapter two before I closed it. I said, what the heck did I just read? What was that? It went over my head. I knew how to read, you know, but it, I didn't understand it. I, I couldn't comprehend it. Literally right after I read, I read it word for word, the first few verses of chapter one, and I closed it saying, what the heck did I just read? I didn't understand. There's no understanding. It was like it got blurred out or something. I had no idea what I just read. And so, you know, I, I didn't get saved, uh, you know, at that time. It was, it was years later. But the point is, is that you seriously cannot read the scriptures that you need to read in these end times without the Holy Spirit. You, you know, I bring to you the headlines because that's my bait 
you know, as a fisherman, come on for, you know, for souls, I, I you know, the Lord has, has, has caused me, he, he, it's, he, he gave to me, um, the, 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 uh, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the option, I don't want to say the option, but he, it, I was just led to use headlines as bait as a fisherman for souls by the spirit of God, uh, to bring people in, to hear this broadcast and to hear the word of God. To let them know that we're living in the last days. These are the signs. The headlines make it clear that, you know, the day of the Lord is at hand. That the second return of Jesus Christ is at hand. That we're living in the last days. And so I tell you now that, you know, if, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you're just giving your life to Jesus. If you're a new person in the faith. Or maybe you backslid. What they call backslide. And you're just finding your way back to Jesus. Maybe you've rededicated your life to Jesus. You really cannot comprehend the word of God outside of receiving the Holy Spirit of God. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And God has made a way for you to do that. Jesus went to the cross over 2,000 years ago. Has a propitiation for the sins of all mankind. He was the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. And the Bible tells us that if anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And so... As he opens up the eyes of our understanding, we, we see, wait a minute, okay, hold on, I'm, you know, I'm a sinner, meaning that I'm not in right standing with God. It's not that I did so many bad things, because there are good people that are hell, in, in hell right now. They're probably better than I've ever been, that, you know, that, you know, than I'll ever be or whatever. It's not about, you know, well, I'm a sinner, well, I don't do that many bad things. You're a sinner because you're not in right standing with God. You could be the perfect person in the world's eyes. You could be the perfect person in your own eyes. You could be good, man. You, you know, you cross all your T's and you dot all your I's and, and you're, you know, you're just like that. You were born a natural good person, if you will. You know, if there's ever such a thing, but to some people it is, it exists. But you're still a sinner. What makes you a sinner is not what you did bad. It's the fact that you're not in right standing with God. And Jesus made a way. He is the way for you to be in right standing with God Almighty. He is the way. He's the only way. It's no different than, you know, um, being allowed in an exclusive club or something. You know, your members, uh, you know, your name being on a membership allows you exclusive access to this particular club. If your name's not on the list, if, you know, if your membership fees dues hasn't been paid, you, you can't come in. With all due respect, you could be this person and that person, but you got to be a member. It's no different. What makes us allowed, what allows us to go into heaven, what gives us that access is the fact that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and what Jesus did for us. That's what allows us access. It's not us being good or not doing too many bad things or... You know, us even going to church, it's not what makes us in right standing with God. And you know, that, that really surprises a lot of people too, really quickly. Um, what surprises a lot of people is that they think that if they go to church and they're in right standing with God. What makes you in right standing with God? If anybody's even asking that question, well, what makes me in right standing with God? I'm glad you asked. What makes you in right standing with God? Let me tell you what does not make you in right standing with God very quickly. What does not make you in right standing with God is if you go to church. There are people that go to church. There are people who went to church last week and they died and they are in hell. They're, they're not in existence on this planet anymore and they're not in heaven. They were quickly sent to hell after quickly being judged that quick. And we have to understand this. So going to church does not make you in right standing with God. Which actually helps because there are some people that are not able to go to church. They have a heart. They want to go to church, but they just can't. Conflicting schedules, whatever. Just life. Something's going on in their life. They just can't. They're unable to. Well, go, now, please, if you can go to church, go. But um, that's not a church point right now. The point is, is that what makes you right standing with God? It, it's not going to church. It's not how much scripture you know. There are people, there, there are professional theologians that, that they are, uh, you know, the, you know, they're, you know, they teach in universities. They're well known. They're heads. They're they're leaders. They're 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 the professions in their field. They they're they're known, man. I mean, they're 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 ones that people you know that that that, that you know. Wow, that's the one you want. If you want to learn anything about the Bible, about theology, you want to go to you know so and so professor so and so. But that person's not saved. They're not in right standing with God, and they know the word. They probably know more word than I do. I'm sure they do. I've had people email me. You wanted to get into a debate. You want to debate? I'm not trying to debate about the word. The word of God is the word of God. I'm not interested in trying to see how much you know, how much you know compared to what I know. The little bit that I know is more than enough. Trust you me. But the point is, knowing a lot of scripture does not make you right standing with God. 
Wearing a cross necklace, as nice as they are, does not make you in right standing with God. Growing up in a Christian home, maybe your mom and dad were Christians, or your single parent family home, perhaps, you know, or whatever, whomever raised you. Maybe your grandma, grandpa, they were, man, they were hardcore Christians. I mean, they just, oh, they, church folks, you know, these people knew and they know and they're, they're, they're faithful people. And you're like, well, that, you know, they have my back. I'm going to kind of run the streets and I, I'm covered. That does not make you in right standing with God. There's a time of accountability that you have to, you know, you're going to have to go big or go home, you know. And home may not be where you want to go if you're not in right standing with God. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And again, you know, the Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man to die and then once to judgment. Each and every one of us are going to die. Each and every one of us are going to have to give an account of our life. This is what the word of God tells us. The Bible tells us very clearly in scripture that each and every one of us are going to be standing before the judgment seat of Christ. It says here, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him, for, for, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, knowing, and listen, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade men, but we are well-known to God, and I also trust are well-known in your consciences. So I'm persuading you in these broadcasts. I've been doing it for the past 10 years. And this is what I've been ordained to do by the Spirit of God. And so you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is not walking on this planet right now. Okay, you can't see Jesus with your natural eyes. People will say, well, if I see him, then I'll give my life to him. No, you won't. If you see him, you're, 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 it's a cult leader that you're probably seeing and you're going to follow that. Jesus hasn't come yet. He will come again. He came over 2,000 years ago as a suffering servant. He will come again. The Bible says, in the clouds of glory, every eye shall see him and every, and, and every heart that pierced him. Now listen, how, how do you get in right standing with God? There's only one way and one way only. You ready? That's to fully submit your entire life to Jesus Christ. That's to submit and surrender your entire life to Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other way to salvation. You can go to church your whole life, die, and end up in the judgment seat. You know, appearing before the judgment seat of Christ and hearing... Jesus himself tell you, you did not make it. Your accolades will come, you know. Files will be open with your name on it. All that you did, not too bad, not too shabby, you did that. And you're thinking, oh yeah, okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna get my reward, I'm gonna get my reward. But if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if you have not fully submitted and surrendered, what that means is that if you have not been born again by the Holy Spirit of God, you have not made it. Even though you may have a large file, a large book containing all the things that you did that was so impressive to the world's eyes. And even could have been impressive in God's eyes if you would have done it through Jesus. If you would have done it as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Do you understand? There's no other way. Somebody's got to love you enough to tell you the truth. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not even so much a person loving you as much as it is the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the promise of God, the finished work of Jesus Christ that is loving you right now enough to tell you you need to give your life to Jesus. Listen, I got to... I got in the broadcast right now. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. Listen, visit my website at www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. Visit my ministry website, learn more about me and what I get to do here, celebrating 10 years of full-time evangelistic ministry this 2020, very special year, and I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm grateful. And I'm just thankful. So anyway, you know, I, I want to invite you to celebrate with me by learning more about my ministry and engaging in all that um, I've, I've been doing for millions of people around the world. I've been honored to preach the gospel to nations that, you know, I've, I've looked at my stats and I'm thinking, man, people heard it from this nation. People have heard, you know, the messages that were delivered from these broadcasts and all these nations. It's very exciting. So I want you to be a part of that. I want you to... Uh, you know, uh, you know, receive the teachings, the preachings, uh, the you know, the prophecy broadcasts and conferences that we've done here, and um, it'll it it is it, you know these are tools to help you renew your mind. 
Okay, these are these are gifts that God has given to us for us to um, renew our mind and uh, for us to uh, walk uh, worthy of our calling, for us to walk as he's called us to in these end times, strong and, and of good courage, not being afraid or, 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 or confused or dismayed, but knowing that God is with us. If you could just get the knowing part, everything else is, is going to really start to fall into place, folks. A lot of people don't even know that God is with them and, and things are just kind of waiting to fall in place and people are frustrated and the things that are waiting to fall in place are getting frustrated too. They're thinking, okay, you got to know God. And how do you do that? There's no other way except you give your life to Jesus. Once you give your life to Jesus, you are in right standing with him. Once you fully submit and surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you're in right standing with him. It's more than just a, you know, what people are calling a sinner's prayer. Where you come to the altar and you pray the sinner's prayer. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about crying out to God. God, you need to save my soul. I'm not in right standing with you. I don't know you. I don't know your presence. If I, I'm scared of death. If I die, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to go to hell. I don't want to die. But if I, I need you to help me. You got to cry out to him. You got to be, you got to be real with him. You got to cry out to him and, and not be afraid to do that because he's real and he loves you and he created you. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 139, verse 13 through 16, you, you formed me in my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God himself made you. Now your mom and your dad got together and, and you know they made a you know got you know they you know they they were part of it, but God is the one who now did all the detail work on you. He made your nose, made your eyes, he made you. He loves you. And you gotta, you know, he made a way for you to be with him again. He made a way for you to be in right standing with this is so important, it's no different than if you did something at your employer. You know, you, you, you know, you're working for your company and you did something, you busted a tire, you busted your laptop, you know, you, you know, your, you know, your company laptop or something. And now you have to, you have to do something to try to be in right standing with your boss. You have to confess boss. I, I screwed up. I dropped the laptop and I broke it. I apologize. I, but I, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I can't pay for it if I have to, but I'll do my best. What do you, you know, what can I do to make up for you would do that in a heartbeat to make sure you don't lose your job. And yet so many people are willing to lose their soul that you are eternal beings, man. You guys got to figure, you guys get this, get this because people are dying right now. I've been with you. I've been live on this air on broadcast 44 minutes and there have been hundreds of people around the world, not thousands of people around the world that have died. Where are they? Okay, I'm working overtime here, folks. I'm not the only one, but many, many, many of us are starting to, get, you know, you know, people are just falling away from the faith, and that includes many leaders in the church. So you got to give your life to Jesus while you can. Now's the time. Now's the day of salvation. Give your life to Him. He'll fill you with His Holy Spirit. You'll be in right standing with Him, and He'll lead you from that moment forward. You need Him to lead you. Trust me. Trust Him. He knows all things. God bless you. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. To tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. Hey, listen, help support the work of the end time ministry. We're procuring for monthly donors, uh, and 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 your support, your financial support really helps make the work of the end time ministry possible. So take a moment and donate. Log on to my ministry website at www.openyoureyespeople.com. Listen, there's a donate link right there on the front homepage. No donation is too small or even too large to help support the work of the end time ministry. Come on, be a cheerful giver. He loves you so much, and uh, well, just see what happens when you do. Let God. Uh, be glorified. Come on. I want to say again, thank you. Um, also, our mailing address, if you want to mail me, is P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas, 78154. And if you always, if you if you ever hear me say us, I always talk, I say me, and that also includes the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So again, thank you so much. Until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed. Bye-bye.